the Rams have had a miserable exhibition season. Now, it doesn't really matter that much because it's practice football, but they've been getting smoked, absolutely cooked in every single game, and now they are dealing with some palace intrigue, locker room drama o rama Say what? So I don't know if you saw this one or not. Maybe you missed it, but we'll, I'll give you the thumbnail version of events, and then we will break it down for you. So Matthew Stafford, who I thought wasn't going to play, but apparently he's going to try to play. We'll see if he can make it through a game without getting hurt. His body falling apart last year with the Rams. But Stafford is back, and he's having a difficult time. The Rams picked up a lot of uh, new teammates, younger players, and there is a gap, a large gap between Matthew Stafford and his teammates, and uh, he is not handling this very well. In fact, one story uh, I read over the weekend said that he's he's had to have the equipment staff print out a book of information, like photographs, like kind of a Facebook, but like a real Facebook, if you will, so that he can remember everyone's name and try to get to know the players on the team. There's that many new players. They have not left their mark. And so Stafford's trying to, to be a leader and all that. So he's trying to learn uh, the names and all that. And uh, he, he just apparently does not know how to handle the situation, mostly because of the, I don't want to say generation gap, because they're from a similar generation, but... Uh, There's a a bit of lag time between the guys who are in their early 20s and Matthew Stafford, who is in his mid-30s at this point. He said, I have to somehow find a way to connect with him. Now, Stafford's wife claims that her husband is having such a tough time dealing with the players going straight to their phones, never looking up after practice and team meetings. And so Stafford even debated, supposedly, taking away their phones. Yeah. Yeah. In a fatherly way. No phone for you. Ixnay on the phone. So let us discuss the question. Any advice, any advice to Matthew Stafford, who is struggling to communicate with his younger Rams teammates? So I've got Xbox, Signpost, and Omaha, Omaha, Omaha. And we will tie all of these things together. And uh, we are going to make a buyer's market. Not a seller's market. A buyer's market is what we're going to make. So, A, my first piece of advice, whatever you do, Matthew Stafford, do not take the cell phones away. Don't do it. That would be high crimes and misdemeanors if you take the cell phones away. But Stafford is sounding like the old codger ready to toss in the sponge, he's 35 years old. Now, last we checked, and what do we know, but last we checked, that is not old geezer status. Uh, you're not, you're not old geezer. Now, sports-wise, you're getting long in the tooth, but in the real world, not so much. Now, regardless of that, Stafford is completely flummoxed by the social media trance that has swallowed up his teammates. So my advice here is don't take the phones away, like I said, But turn on the Xbox. Communicate. And you might even want to go to old school video game. Minecraft, right? Minecraft, you're you're playing the zombie apocalypse is what you're doing here. It is a sign of the times. There was a wise person years ago that said Gen Z stands for zombie generation. Addicted to social media and all that. So you have to go. It's kind of like in business where you go where the customers are and you have to go where these people are communicating. So if you're Matthew Stafford, you have to get on TikTok and Instagram, and that is where these people are in a hypnotic state. So you have to communicate with them on TikTok and Instagram type videos. And Stafford sounds like he's planting the excuse for this Rams team to to underachieve. It's not just a Ram issue, by the way. It is rampant uh, around the world of sports and not just the NFL, but the teams that are successful are able to figure it out. Right? You got to figure it out. Now, turning the page on that, another wild story that has come to my attention, and this is 
nutso. It's around the value of the name, image, and likeness in college football. So if you didn't see this one, you might have missed it. Uh, We recently learned that Texas freshman Arch Manning, who is not, not the son of Peyton or Eli, he is the nephew of those guys, uh, the uh, Cooper Manning prodigy. Uh, So Arch Manning is projected to make $2.9 $2.9 million through NIL revenue this year. And I saw this bouncing around and it caught my attention that just having the Manning DNA, to rephrase this, just having the Manning DNA, Arch Manning is going to make uh, almost $2 million more than Joe Burrow of the Cincinnati Bengals on his salary this season, his base salary in the Natty. But wait, there's more. Uh, How about the Heisman winner from USC, Caleb Williams? The men of Troy, they know how the boosters at USC know how to take advantage of that NIL. Uh, That's how they got him to leave Oklahoma and come out to USC. They just paid him. So Caleb Williams is projected to make $2.6 million. So he will also make a million and a half more, over a million and a half more than uh, Joe Burrow in Cincinnati. Uh, he will also make a ton more than Trevor Lawrence and his salary in Jackson. So that's just a couple of examples. There's others we could use. What are your thoughts on Arch Manning and Caleb Williams, a couple of college players making more from NIL deals than the Bengals' Joe Burrow? So my thought, my first thought is you're traveling through another dimension. We're, we're in this together. We're traveling through a dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are that of imagination. You see that signpost up ahead, your next stop, the Twilight Zone. We have entered the Twilight Zone. It's wacky, wacky, wacky is what it is. So this has, it is what? It has incentivized players to stay in college longer. The only glitch, and there's no workaround on this until the NFL redoes the contracts, but the only glitch in this plan, the sooner you get to the NFL world, the sooner the clock starts ticking and you can get that second-year contract. So the standard rookie contract is four years plus a fifth-year option. But typically what we've seen in recent years outside of the Bengals with Joe Burrow, is if you're really good the first four years, they'll tear up the fifth-year option often and just give you the new contract after four years. But you got to get through the rookie contract. That's when the real big Bafo Sacco money starts rolling in. So you got to play those four years before the teams crank up the money machine. So it's a catch-22. But... If you're a guy like Caleb Williams and you really don't want to play for the cacti in Arizona and you're making $2.6 million a year through name, image, likeness, you you can just say, go pound sand to the Cardinals. I ain't going there. I don't want to play for you. And I don't like that, by the way. And I, I've ranted over the years. You've been with me a long time. You know, for, for many, many years, we goofed on Eli Manning calling him the punk for his punk move. He didn't want to play for the San Diego Chargers and wanted to play for the Giants and all that. We raised holy hell. And guys have always gotten money. Big-time star football players have always gotten money. It hasn't been kosher. Now it's now it's allowed. Now it's legal. Uh, but that, it's, it's insane uh, how much money they're getting, more than the rookie contract. You can make more as a college star player than you can in the NFL to begin. Now, the last word here. Let's go to Kansas City. Speaking of money, we are told now the Chiefs have alerted all the other interested teams that they are not going to trade Chris Jones, their star defensive lineman. They are adamant that Chris Jones will not be playing for anyone other than Kansas City. The star defensive player continues to hold out. He has already lost over a million dollars. He is going to lose over a million dollars every single game that he misses in the regular season. And yet, KC is like, hey, we're not doing that. We've got the Sunshine Band over here. We're not going to ruin the Sunshine Band. 
Uh, we're going to keep it going. So do you buy or sell the Chiefs refusing to trade defensive star Chris Jones, who wants the Aaron Donald contract? Are you buying or selling the report that the Chiefs are refusing to trade Chris Jones among uh, amid, rather, this contract holdout? So I am buying that that is the position today. That, yes, today that is the public position. Now, keep in mind, Jones has indicated that he is willing to lose over $8 million by missing the first eight, eight weeks of the regular season. But as we said in a previous episode of the show, that was a tactical error by Chris Jones because he has now let the Chiefs know that as long as they're patient, there is an end date. There's an expiration date on this. The expiration date is week eight, that around week eight, Chris Jones will show up, eight or nine, he'll be there. Now, he is betting that the Chiefs defense is going to be so terrible, so deep in the weeds, that there will be a ground swell of support to get him paid, that the Chiefs defense will be biblically bad, people will be blowing the whistle on Kansas City, you got to bring in Chris Jones, and then he'll get his money after missing a couple of games. Let's say the Lions go out in the first game against Kansas City and put up a 40-point performance, and Jared Goff slinging the ball around against Kansas City, then all of a sudden it's like, well, we got to get Jones in here. So that's he, he's betting that the Chiefs' defense is going to be so bad that they have to, to make a move. And the, the other scenario, they don't have to necessarily pay him. The other scenario is for the Chiefs' front office to turn and go, Omaha, 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 and call an audible. Call an audible. At the line of scrimmage. Remember, the plan was not to trade Tyreek Hill. But plans change. We believe as of this moment, there is a 15% chance that Chris Jones will end up being traded. Jones is, as we said, he's betting that Kansas City is going to struggle and he's going to win. And it's a, it's a staring match at this point. And the Chiefs are betting they're going to be okay and they can just wait out the hostage negotiation. In the meantime, you've got these vultures who are circling over saying, well, why don't we try to sneak in here and we could get Chris Jones and why not? What the heck? We'll give up uh, some draft picks, but that's pretty much all the Chiefs are going to end up getting. The other issue here for Kansas City, since they are the presumptive favorite to win the Super Bowl, And the teams that would want Chris Jones are all Super Bowl contenders. Would you be willing to trade Chris Jones to a team where he can come back and bite you in the tuchus if you end up playing? Let's say you trade Chris Jones to the Philadelphia Eagles, just for example, and you play Philadelphia again in the Super Bowl. What happens there? You trade him to the 49ers, and you have to play the Niners in the Super Bowl, uh, matchups the Chiefs have had in recent years. So it is an interesting conundrum for Kansas City.